cases relating to um, like an like a, like an abstract class that only has abstract methods. Um, what it's the, the idea is is that you could have a situation where you have methods or you have something that would apply to a lot of different kinds of things. For example, the, the, the example we're going to go over today would be if we wanted to write a notification or an alert system um, that's sent out via email to different people on campus um, about, you know, events. You know, something happens, class, you know, school is closed because of weather, um, parking lot is closed. It's funny, I get those notifications. This is like parking lot 8 is closed. It's like, I have no idea what parking lot 8 is. But, you know, at least you know, when I see which one is closed, I don't know what parking lot 8 is. But, you know what I mean. Those kinds of, like, general informational alerts that probably go out to everyone. All right? And they might go out to different groups of people depending on the particular context of it. They might have, uh, you might have uh, a notification that goes out like to literally everyone. All students, all faculty, all staff, and maybe even um, members of the community, businesses, or whatever that have dealt with, with LC. So, those things may not share a lot of other characteristics. So we could probably contrive an inheritance structure where there was a superclass and a subclass and all that. But you don't really want to do that if it's not a real one. And what do I mean by real? I mean logical. It makes sense in real world terms. And from a programming perspective where there's a lot of sharing of attributes and especially behaviors. So. Let's say we have three groups, four groups of people that might get emails from LC. And here's the rule how their email names are constructed. All right. Um, the, the, you, you had asked a good question um, last time um, with the um, age one. How, you know, it looked largely like just cutting and pasting stuff. And again, the reason for that is that was an extremely simple example. And there was no, like, processing involved. Here what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of processing. And we're going to create different rules for each person or each group of people that receive emails. Um, faculty. For faculty, their email is... First name, dot, last name, at LorraineCCC.edu. So, my email would be prof.michael.zellers at lccc.edu. Students, or staff, will say, just to be different, it'll be last name, dot first name, at Lorraine CCC. And again, I know that there's problems if there'd be two people with the same name. All right, in, in either of those categories, if there's two professors with the same name or two employees. If there happen to be two employees with the same name, we would fire one of them. All right, so we don't have to go through and redo this example. All right, it, so again, there's things we could do. Probably what you do is you like add a sequence number. Like uh, a lot of times, like, um, like my daughter's email at school is usually like their first initial, last name, and then there'll be like a number after it. And that number's probably just a sequence number. Like the first A Zellers was A Zellers 1, and then, and again, you know, and then the next one's A Zellers 2. So we could, we could, we could easily modify this, but I just don't feel like worrying about that today. All right. Uh, students. Their email name, 
their student number. At lorraineccc.edu. And then just community members, what is what the email ad uh, address is. In other words, it's just an attitude. In these three cases, the email addresses are derived from other attributes. So if you know the person's first name and last name, you can piece, uh, if they're a professor, you can piece together their email address. If you know a student last name and student number, you can piece together their email address and so on. Okay, so that's our rules. Again, whether they're logical or feasible or whatever, yeah, you know, that's the rules that we're going to play by today. So, let's say we have an alert class. And the alert class is going to have the five things. It's going to have a message. That's going to be a, simply a string field. That it's going to be um, like, you know, there's too much snow today, um, we're canceling school. Or it's too nice of day today, so we're canceling. I, I always thought that like, uh, if like the president of the college ever did that, he would he or she would win my heart forever. If they said like the first day of spring when it hits 60, it's like, you know what, folks, take the day off. It's too beautiful. It's like that would, I, I don't know if that would make good business sense, but, but I, I certainly would um, swear allegiance to such a leader for the rest of my life. I haven't even gotten anything questionable yet, but go ahead. Go, no, go ahead. Maybe. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good question. I don't, I don't honestly know. That would be something to look up. All right, then we're going to have a list of recipients. Well, we could do this a few ways, right? We could have a list of faculty members. We could have like four separate lists. A list of faculty members, a list of staff, a list of students, a list of community members. All right, but you know, that gets to be kind of bulky. And really the same thing, you know, you're going to do the same thing. You're going to send each one of them an email. So you're going to treat them the same way. They all have the same behavior. All right. Um, it's just a matter of we're going, to cons we're going to get their email address in a different manner. All right. So since I'm not going to make four lists of four different people, I'm going to make an interface that is email recipient. And each one of these is going to implement each one of these is going to implement email recipient. We'll talk more about that email recipient later. Our alert then, alert email is going to have an array list. We don't know how many people we're going to send this to, right? It's going to consist of an array list of email recipients. And what instructors would we expect to have here? Instructor that accepts a message we could have a constructor that accepted a message and an array list or we could simply have an add recipient to this that would accept what an email recipient And then we're going to have an end method that is going to loop through the array list and send an email 
to each recipient. It's important to think through stuff like this. That's why I'm not just jumping in and coding. All right? I'm not just opening up Notepad and start typing away. It's important to have a path that we're going to go through and to think this through. Now, I've done a little bit of thinking through about this problem beforehand, so I'm not going necessarily as slowly as I would if I was doing it. I'm just sort of telling you what I have came up with here. But again, it's important you go through that process, that if this is what you want to do, here's a process that you'd, you'd go through. So, what methods are we going to have on our email recipient? interface. Get type. Do we care about the type if we're sending an email? Am I going to send a different email to you? Or, or how is the email going to be different if I send that the campus is closing because of weather or if you're a student or faculty? Well, then when you were creating your list, you'd only look through staff and faculty. At the point, that would happen at the point prior to sending the email. All right? that, would, that would be part of the process that populated the recipients. All right? There might be a method that says, get all staff, get all faculty get all students, whatever. All right. If this is simply the email message uh, 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 by itself, then we really don't need that. What do we need, though? If we get a message, if, if me and you both get a message saying campus is closed tomorrow because of snow, is it going to be different for you than it is for me, the from part? No. So the fun part could just be an attribute of this class. All right. What should every email recipient be able to tell the world? What should every email recipient be able to tell the world? Yes, the email address. Every email recipient should be able to say, here's, your, here's my email address. Now remember, we have different rules depending on the person or, or depending on the class that they belong to. The email address for a faculty is determined by their first name and last name. The email address for a staff is also determined by their first name and last name. Email address for a student is determined by their last name and student number. The email address for uh, a community is simply an attribute. All right. So each one of those has their own scheme for coming up with the email address. All right. But all of them should be able to give me the email address. They're an email recipient. They better be able to tell you what their email address is. So that will be the that we will on this email recipient. And what's the signature of this going to be? Get email address and it's going to return a string. All right. So let's go create a couple things. Let's create our interface. Let's create our alert. Let's create one of the email recipient classes such as the professors or faculty. And then we'll create a, a test class, we'll test it, we'll make sure that works, and we'll add different implementations of the interface and add those to our test class. So let's start out. Let me go in to Notepad.
And I'm going to start and I'm going to create to the interface first. What's the interface going to look like? Public interface. All right. Public interface. Email recipient. Does this have any attributes? No. Interfaces don't have attributes. All right. I guess that's a different. That, that's another difference between an uh, an interface and an abstract class. Is an abstract class could have attributes, but an interface does not have attributes. All it's going to have is what? It's going to have the signature of the methods that those implementing this interface need to implement. So, pop string get email address. So that's the signature of the function that we need to be we need to implement in every um, everyone that implements this needs to do that. So let's go and save this. in here and we'll call it email recipient pardon me did I make a mistake or are you just making fun of my okay all right all right I, I, I could never tell. I know you're not a fan of typing a lot of things, so I, I couldn't tell if I like made a mistake or not. But the compiler, so if I did make a mistake, I made a mistake. Okay, so let's go. Let's email alert. And it's going to have public class. Thank you. If that's what you said, sometimes all is is here. A mumble. A mumble that I've done something wrong. All right. Um, was really disconcerting, and it could be that you just got a funny text from someone. But like, if I hear a laugh in the in a in the thing, because I like, never know. Like, you know, do I have some lunch on my teeth, or like, did I say something stupid, or did I type something wrong, or, or what? But anyhow, ping. Message array list, and that's going to contain a list of email recipients. We'll call it recipients. I'm gonna I'm gonna night before next class I'm gonna watch like stand up comedians and see how they deal with hecklers. <laughs> All right. So we got an instructor that's gonna accept a message. Punk, um, email alert. String arg. And I'll say message equals arg. Public void add recipient. Email recipient arg. And I'm going to add those to the array list. Is 
then let's see what else did we have oh we had we needed a send and we're not actually attached to an email server or anything here so I'm not actually going to send an email what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to say message sent to and then the email address of the person and we'll pretend that that's uh, an email so public void send and so how do I do the array list oh you don't have much to say now do you <laughs> for in I equals zero I less than recipients that size I plus plus so this is what we we'll want to do for each person and we could do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to say email recipient E equals recipients dot get I. Then I'm going to say print or System dot out dot print ln message sent to e dot get email yeah email is supposed to be like the, the email message the, the text of the email message all right okay I, I think this is it but you know who knows for sure the compiler knows so I'm gonna go and save this and Call this email alert. Not Java. All right. And let's compile. Notice I'm compiling. Can't run it at this point, right? I don't have anything to test. I don't have any main methods, but that's okay. I can check for how many times, how many different ways I spelled recipient. All right. So it's not not a waste to do that. To compile it's just it's just a question of do you want to like later on compile it and get a million errors or do you want to compile it now and get half million errors and and uh, and correct those so so Java C star dot Java and Okay, can't find symbol. Yep, got to import array list. One error, and I think I have another error here. We'll we'll correct that. So where do you import the array list from? import java dot util dot array list all right let's save this and try again all right ah Thank you. Wow, it's great that someone is playing along at home.
with this so that they can check. So yeah, it should be get email address. There's no such thing as get email. All right. I know what you're thinking. If I had typed it shorter, it would have. All right. Okay, so yay, clean compile. All right, so we must be done and it must be right. I can submit it. Uh, yeah. So no. So now what we're going to do is we're going to do two things. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a, a professor class that implements that interface. And then we are going to create um, a test to, to test out sending emails just to professors. All right. So let me save this new public class professor implements email recipient. All right. So I'll make a constructor, or I'll make the two attributes first actually. String, first name, string, last name, I'll make a constructor that will set that public, set both of them, public Say first name equals argf. Last name equals argl. Okay. If we were to compile this now, what would happen? Pardon me? Let's compile it and find out. Great answer. Can anyone, can anyone play the amazing Kreskin or who's the guy, who's who people that can tell the, Gene Dixon? Well, that's going back a, a bunch of years. Who can tell the future? Pardon me? No. Okay. Okay. Go ahead. What's going to happen when I compile it? Okay. Hey, all right. Let's, let's see. We go to compile it and boom, we get an error. Because professor is not abstract, so that's one way out, is to say professor is an abstract class and then have ancestors of it implement the get email. So that would be a possibility. Um, but it does not override abstract method get email address. So in other words, I said I was an email recipient. What does it mean to be an email recipient? It means to follow the contract as laid down in the interface. What does that mean? That means to implement all the methods that are specified in the interface. And in this case, there's only one, get email address. But we have to have it in there. If we don't have it in there, we can't call the professor as implementing the email interface. It doesn't do that job. It can't be used in that role can't be used as an email recipient be if it doesn't have that method. So, go in here and we'll say public string get email address and we'll concatenate the string
Okay. So we've implemented that method. And we said that the email address equals PROF plus the first name plus a dot plus the last name plus a dot loading ccc.edu. And, pardon me? You're right. And then we return it. All right. Now, we have a clean compile. We do. We can't test it yet, though, right? Because we don't have our test class. So what we'll have to do is we'll have to go in and make a couple of, um, you know, to make a, a couple professors add it to the list, and then say send, and then we'll test it. Once we have that, then we can go and expand this and create our other interfaces. The thing is, though, is keep in mind that in this case, each of my classes is going to have a different rule, a different little mini algorithm for creating the email address. That's the email address for faculty people. For staff it's something else. For students it's something else. And so on. So it doesn't matter how it comes up with it. All right. To implement the interface there simply has to be a method that method or methods that implement the methods that are defined in the interface. So let's go in and create a unit test. And I could say email alert A equals new email alert class canceled due to nice weather. Yeah, there you go. All right, so we've created that object. I'm going to create just a couple professors. Prof professor P1 equals new professor Mike Sellers. And then we're going to go and add each of these to our email message. And so I'll say a dot add recipient <laughs> p1. Now I can, I can call this method and pass it a professor y. What is the argument expecting in the add recipient method? What is the argument in the add recipient method? It is an email recipient. So if we look at the email alert class, the argument for add recipient is an email recipient. So can I put a professor in there? Yes, because a professor is a email recipient. 
Remember, the ISA also applies for interfaces too. It's just sort of a weaker ISA. It, it, it's more like, a, yeah, it can serve the role as, as opposed to thinking of that as being like a fundamental part of its nature. I mean, yes, I am someone that gets emails and I can be included in a group of all the different kinds of people that include emails, but that's not like my prime function in life, getting emails. All right, so therefore it wouldn't make sense to like inherit from that. You know, there are probably other things that, now it might make sense, for example, to have faculty and staff inherit from the same thing because those are both employees of LC. So you could make an argument for doing that, but we won't necessarily do that in this example. All right, so now, finally I'm gonna say go ahead and send the email, which will simply display messages going across. So I'll compile it, and now I can run it. And it gives me the three email messages that it would return. And my email is formed properly. Okay, questions? Yes? Pardon me? You have to create an inheritance structure for that, though. And, I, I, and, and we've already established that an uh, inter, uh, inheritance structure really isn't relevant here. So I would prefer to continue on the interface example and implement a couple other classes that implement the email recipient. I think that would be a better thing to demonstrate. All right. So we got a working for students. Yay. But we have... Three other types. I'm sorry, we have it in playing for faculty. So we finished that. Let's do staff, students, and community now. So let's go and make a what do I want to do? I think I can close these guys. I'm going to copy my professor class. Make a staff class. Let's edit it. Staff also implements email recipient. Um, first name, last name, that'll be the same. The only difference is, is that for staff, we invert them. So last name, first name. All right. So now let's go and test if it works with staff members. Shout out to Fred Flintstone. All right. And we'll add Fred to the list. Can we add Fred Flintstone to the list? Yes, we can. Because that argument needs to be an email recipient. And students, or I'm sorry, staff, we've defined as being email recipient, as recipients, implementing that class. Oh, I'm sorry, implementing that interface. 
So now we can go and do it. And I misspelled one of the names. Worse than that, I forgot to change the name of the constructor. in my test class. Repeat that, please. Wow. When they turn, they turn quick. <laughs> really? There's two L's in Hansel? I am never sure on that one. That's one of those words that's just I have a mental block against. All right, so now it sends it to the three professors plus the one staff member. And if you notice, the staff member's email address is, co is constructed correctly, all right, for them. All right, so we probably have time. We probably can do the last two of student and, um, what was the other one? Um, just community member. So we'll save this as student.java. Now remember with a student, there's another thing that comes into play. There's a student number. Okay, so that's an attribute that doesn't even exist in those other classes, right? So it doesn't come into play at all. It's irrelevant. And that's sort of the idea of an interface. It doesn't matter how the classes that implement the interface do their thing, all right? Just that they are able to honor that contract and that they are able to implement all the methods. So whatever it needs, that's fine. As long as it can, when the day is done, implement all the methods in there. So I'm going to add on to the I'm going to add another argument to my constructor. And then what did we say? It's the last name plus the student number. All right, let's go and change our test class to create a new student. I'd imagine Barney would have a low student number. We're going to give him a student number of like five. And then we're going to add the recipient list. And again. We're able to send emails to all of those, and his email address comes out formatted the correct way. So again, getting back to the question last time, like we really weren't doing much drastically different in those methods, that was just a particular example. Here, we're using different attributes. In this case, the student, in the student case, the student number comes into play, and there's no such thing as a student number for any of the other classes. 
in the case the last one, a community member, there's just going to be an email attribute, period. That all we do is simply send that. Whereas in the others, we have a little algorithm to construct it. Again, much like we would if we were calculating like the speed that a bird could fly. We might look at its weight and the species of bird and the wingspan and so on and come up with a calculation. Well, here we're doing a little mini calculation. We're, we're calculating, we're forming the email address based on some rules. So just for completeness, let's go in and Save this as community. All that this has is an email address. Now again, of course, Keep in mind that, you know, there'd be other methods and attributes in these classes as well. I'm just demonstrating a piece of it that's relevant to the email interface. This one has a real simple job. It just returns the email address associated with this. And again, keep in mind that these would be, these objects would be created not by someone hard coding in a list of all the people, but retrieving, doing a database query, looping through the results of the database query and creating classes for each of these. You know, any number of ways that these would be created, you know. We're just writing a test class to test it and to make sure that it works. So let's go in to make sure we've saved it and go in here and we'll create a community member. I was going to say Mr. Spacely, but that's the Jetsons. That's okay. We'll put him in here too. Spacely at gmail.com. And my sincere apologies if there is someone with spacely .gmail or at gmail.com for an actual email address. Um, if you do get emails um, from people that said they saw you in this class, um, feel free to forward it to me, mzellers at lorraineccc.edu. So let's go and add the community member here and compile. What did I do? Yeah, I didn't change the constructor. And then it forms those. So, and just for completeness sake, change the spelling of canceled. And it still works. All right. Now let's think about what you have to do. You have to create a battery class that has some attributes. And I don't know how batteries work. All right, so I just made stuff up. I do know that batteries have voltages, they have types, and they have sizes. All right, you can just make up the types and sizes. I'm not going to check you. All right, so you could make big, yeah, really big, and gigantic, or tiny, or whatever. All right. Um, the voltage should be a number. The size and the type, you can just make up to anything. Then you're going to make devices that are battery powered. And there's a lot of things that can be battery powered. And I think I have a list of, of a handful that I want you to implement. 
What you will do is you'll create a method that you should be able to give to any battery a battery powered device and the battery will tell you if that battery works in that device. So in other words, if I had a 9 volt alkaline small battery and my car required a large car battery that was 20 volts or something, I don't know, then it would tell you no, that that battery won't work in that device. But if it matched up, if the voltage, the type, and the uh, size of it matched up, then you'd say yes, this battery works in this device. So, um, I think you can see again, other than the fact that we're making up the battery sizes and types, I think you can see where uh, an application like this or, or classes like this would come handy. All right? Think of auto parts. You know, in auto parts all the time, you know, I'm so intimidated going in there looking for wiper blades because there's like 6,000 different kinds of wiper blades. Will that work in my car? You know? It would be nice if there was something that you could plug in the kind of car it was. And the wiper blade would tell you, yes, I will work in this car. Or the auto part will say, yes, I can work in here. So we're doing that sort of thing with batteries. All right. So you'll create a battery-powered interface. You will implement that interface for the devices that I have mentioned. Then you'll have a battery class who will have, a mo in addition to its constructors and other uh, methods, will have a does this battery work for this device method? That you give it a device, it returns a Boolean true or false. No, you put in, you, you will pass a single device to the battery and say, will this battery work for this cell phone? Will this battery work for this flashlight? So yeah, you don't have to loop through like we did here. Questions? Now again, your code for each device could be pretty simple, you know. Um, not knowing much about um, how batteries work, you know, maybe larger cars require bigger batteries. That would seem to make sense. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Definitely if it was, say, a hybrid, it would probably require a different battery than there. So there could be logic in your automobile that looked at the kind of car it was and determined what kind of battery it was. All right? Um, you don't really need to take it to that level unless you want to. Questions? All righty, we'll see you up in lab.